Brazil, India, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa and Turkey. The collective voice of the Global South can force Moscow to change its position on the war against Ukraine, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba said. African countries, including South Africa, are very interested in ending the war because it suffers from the economic consequences of this war. They have some political ambitions to not only develop the economy but also to have a say in international politics. In this sense, they are also competitors of the West. Eva Dabrowska, employee of the Free University of Berlin in the Deutsche Welle Geffekte podcast. Each of these six countries has enough incentive or influence to convince the Kremlin to change course. It will be a gradual process, but it is already moving in the right direction. So, perhaps every country acting on its own doesn't have a sufficient amount of energy that could make Russia change its position. But if you take all of these countries together, the cumulative effect on Russia can be a game-changer. And that is the purpose to bring together everyone who is willing to change the situation for the good. Because together we can stop this war, we can implement a peace formula and restore Ukraine's territorial integrity in the interests of the entire international community. Dmitry Kuleba, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, in an interview with Arab News. On August the 5th and the 6th at the meeting in Jeddah, high-ranking officials and diplomats from 40 countries discussed the implementation of the Ukrainian peace formula, the very fact that China, India, Brazil and the Republic of South Africa participate in them proves the difference between the interests of these states and Russia. Moscow appears to be betting on keeping the war going as long as possible, at least until the US presidential election, analysts say. For the economies of the countries of the global south, the continuation of Russia's war against Ukraine is disastrous. It's not in their interest, they want the war to end, and in the short term it is necessary to renew the grain agreement, ensure nuclear safety and gradually normalize international relations. Here there is a gap in their positions and the positions of Russia. We are trying to take advantage of this gap. The presidents of Brazil, India, China and the Republic of South Africa will gather on August 22nd for the BRICS summit. Russia will be represented by Foreign Minister Lavrov. Putin did not dare to go, fearing arrest on the warrant of the International Criminal Court, and take part in the video conference mode. The Kremlin uses any international platform, including the BRICS summit, to spread its ideology, as well as to completely level international rules, advisor to the head of the office of the President of Ukraine, Mikhail Podolyak, believes. If the BRICS countries are interested in keeping Russia in this form, they are making a strategic mistake, because they will always have a paria who will also pull into politics, into the politics of the conflict's compromising sense, into the politics of destruction and so on. This is what they need to understand. Russia seeks to turn the BRICS into an anti-Western coalition. However, this is at odds with the interests of the other members of the association. The BRICS countries are closely connected with the West economically, while Russia is in isolation and has actually become a paria. An economic cooperation with the Kremlin is toxic for the world's leading economies. Reported by Pavel Steinmach and Natalia Husak, UATV News.